Hi, my name's Heather. I am a final year medical student and I also work in medical school admissions. I've been a specialist tutor for a number of years now and I've been asked to talk to you about sort of the application process and things you can do to increase your odds of getting in. So I've got sort of five main areas which we work in and um, the first one is all down to you really and that's meeting the entry requirements. The biggest barrier to people accessing medical school is not doing well enough in their GCSEs and their A-levels. So really the hard work starts when you're about 14, 15. You need to get good grades in the sciences, English and maths to be able to carry you on through into your A-levels. Now when it comes to choosing your A-levels, you need to do that carefully, you need to look at the choices you're making and how that influences medicine down the line. So usually we expect chemistry, biology, and then something in the lines of either physics or maths. You might have the option to do additional subjects, and they can often be things that you find interesting and that are useful. So an essay-based subject is normally something that I would recommend particularly for students applying to Oxbridge, where you write quite a lot of essays, certainly in the first three years. The second main area that you need to really work on is work experience. Now that's just not quite just for you, but also for the university as well. Being a medical student means that you have a lot of money poured into you all the way through your medical career, and the university needs to know that you're not going to duck out halfway through the course, and you're going to stay through. Getting work experience allows you to find out whether medicine's for you, whether it's something you want to do, whether it's something you can see yourself doing, and whether it's something you can be inspired by to carry you through the difficult times in medical school, like exams and so on. Now, in terms of medical school and the work experience that's expected of you, different places expect different things. Generally, everybody sees it as reasonable to have done something with people. It doesn't have to be in a hospital, it doesn't have to be in a care environment, but things that people usually find helpful are working in a nursing home, or even working with youth groups and other sort of children's groups. I would recommend, wherever possible, trying to get in touch with junior doctors in your area, in your local hospital and so on, and asking to shadow them for a few days, because that's going to give you the biggest flavour of what your life's going to be like for the next 20 or so years. And it tells you whether you're going to like it or not. The third thing you need to do is you need to look into researching your course. Medicine in England, certainly in the UK, has got a very wide array of types of courses that you can do. There's traditional courses, spiral courses, problem-based learning courses, and different things to different people. A traditional course, for example, has got a very science-based focus for the first three years and then a very clinical based focus for the next three years. Other courses integrate clinical experience very early on and it allows you to build your relationship with patients and how you relate to them as you mature through medical school. Different things suit different people and you will know which one you prefer. Certainly it's something for you to look at and to make decisions when it comes to narrowing down your choices when you're writing your application. Other things to consider are the location of the university and whether you'd like to live close to home, further away, about the involvement of different things like special features universities might offer. So very few universities now offer full body dissection. Um, certainly when I applied, few did and it's getting less and less now. If this is something that you really want, you need to look into that and ask the universities whether it's still on offer now. There's much more progress being made with prosections and even computerised dissection based learning for your anatomy. Something else you really ought to be looking into researching is the politics and the future of medicine. Right now things are a little bit uncertain in terms of junior doctor contracts, consultant contracts and the work-life balance is becoming a bit tricky for most trainees. You need to have a look at this, see where it's going, you need to be a bit aware of it and see how you feel about how things are going to progress. Don't go into medicine and then suddenly feel like you've been betrayed by your degree and by your course because you didn't do the research early on. Now the thing that most people worry about when they do the medical school application is that they don't meet all the extra criteria. And there's this 
understanding that perhaps you need to be this person who's applied, who's done incredibly well in their A-levels and has got 100% in everything, has won prizes, won awards for everything as they've gone through school. You fight for your country, you're an Olympic gymnast and you've gone and cured cancer in your summer off. You don't need to do all these extracurricular things. What we want to see is that you've involved yourself in your school as you've been going through everything. That you've been involved in different groups, in different societies, that you've enjoyed your experience. We don't need you to be the best at everything, but picking up a couple of things that you enjoy and that you've done and stuck with and you've showed some determination in doing that is really, really good for your application. Now this can be anything. It can be working with charities, it can be organising an end of year prom, anything that you think that you might enjoy and that you've learnt things from is useful to do. There's no need to start doing extra thousands of things and thousands of courses for the sake of your CV, certainly not at this stage. And finally, the last thing for you to really think about is the process. So first you have to sit, uh, you have to sit exams, so UK CAT or BMAT, the different admissions exams that are needed in terms of getting into universities. Different universities require different exams. You need to know which ones they are and you need to prepare for them. There are different courses you can take, certainly I teach a few. Um, there are different books you can use and there are online resources as well. Different things work for different people. Some people like the security of having your own private tutor to do these things. Some people find that they're able to do it on their own. What we do know is that the more you prepare, the better you do. Then you need to look at your personal statement. Now it's important here to use this as an opportunity to explain all the extra things you've done and the things you've learnt from them. Don't be the person who writes on their personal statement, my name is Heather and I have gone and done this, 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 this and I'm brilliant because I've done all of these things. You need to say what you learned from each thing and how it's helped you grow as a person. We're very reflective in medical school and everything you do needs to be reflected on as you grow and learn. And then finally, there's your interview. Now this is where your work experience helps come in. People relate very well to stories and I always tell my students when it comes to people asking you questions, the tricky questions like why do you want to be a doctor, the best way to relate to that is to answer with a story that shows you why you do want to be a doctor and so on. And this allows you to draw from your experiences that you've reflected on. Again, you need to prepare but not too much. Don't be the person who sat and has rehearsed a script for answers to all of the questions because it comes across poorly. Prepare a little, but be human and enjoy it. Don't worry if things don't go so well. I remember in my medical school interview, I broke the door handle and we were trapped in the room for a while and I coughed all over my interviewers because I had a chest infection. I was still offered a place and as I left the room, the girl who followed me while I stood there, door handle in my hand, said to me, well that's brilliant because now you won't get in. She didn't follow. So it's about who you are as a person and it's communicating that you're a lovely, sensible human being who be a good doctor in your interview rather than being this robot that everyone seems to think you need to be. My name is Heather Davis and this is what I know about going into medical school in a nutshell.